What's going on you guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. You know leather patch trucker hats are very popular right now and they are in big demand. You'd think with all the people making these, the market would be saturated. On the contrary, in fact, a popular leather patch hat supplier has notice on his website to expect a four week delay in shipping. In today's video, I'm going to go over my process on how I create these cool hats. From my leather hat supplier to how I set up the artwork and pull it into light burn and engrave and cut the patches, seal the patches, and apply the patches to the hats. I've also collected a couple of tips and tricks I've learned along the way. So what are you waiting for? All right, I'm going to start with the leather patches. First off, you're going to need some leather. And if there's not a leather supplier in your area, head on over to the Buckle Guy or Weaver Leather Supplies and pick you up some three to four ounce leather, which is around 1.2 to 1.6 millimeters in thickness. You're looking for a soft leather. Um, let's look through here and let's, you can start out with the hides, the half the half hides, uh, but I would suggest starting out with a leather panel because it's it's cut uh, so it'll fit inside your CO2 laser. What you're looking for is the English bridle material. Wicket and Craig is a very popular brand. I've used it. It's 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 so popular. In, in fact, it's a lot of it's uh, out of stock most of the time and you're looking for a leather that is going to show up the burn so you know I try to stay away from these the darker colors uh, this would be a good color here uh, this would be a great color here in this russet or this traditional buck brown uh, I would suggest any of these three, and in fact, there's a there's a uh, tan here. Any of the lighter the lighter colors of the Wicket and Craig English Bridal, three to four ounce. Now that's from the Buckle Guy. Now the patches that we're going to be burning today. This is Red Rock Rust, uh, waxy pull up from Weaver Leather Supply. It's a 12 by 24 inch piece of leather that's pre-cut, it's super soft. Uh, it is around 1.3 millimeters thick, as you can see here, it's got a nice back. It's uh, This is my go-to leather. Mm -hmm. Don't limit yourself to just leather. Think outside the box. I was perusing the Weaver Leather Supply store and I came across cork. I thought, huh, I wonder if you could cut and engrave cork. And I looked and I ordered some of this fantastic looking cork. Uh, there's different patterns and striations. Uh, I did not choose the leopard with gold as I didn't feel like it would the the, the engraving would get lost in all these spots, but uh, I did get some gold speckled, and I really like the natural. And for th you, this, you're looking at this price, and you're going, "Holy cow, Garrett, thirty-two fifty. Well, this is fifty-two inches wide, and you get this by the yard. So, just think how many patches, thirty-six inches long, and fifty-two inches wide." and I'll show you this is my design and this is my Etsy store I'll put a link in the description below to my Etsy store if you want uh, if, you're, if you don't have a laser if you want me to make you a custom design patch just head on over there uh, to my Etsy store and look at this I, I cut it out in the shape of the state of Arkansas and I put the obligatory Bigfoot on here that I engraved with my laser. And check that out, it glued just great on here and I think it looks fantastic. 
And here's another one here with the cork. And you can wear this hat and you're a walking billboard with your logo here. And this can strike up a conversation with small businesses in your area that would like to uh, see the quality of your hats and your type of patch. So don't limit yourself to just leather. Now patch size can vary on your art. So I try to make it a habit not to go any larger than two and a half inches tall or three and three quarters inches wide. Uh, circle patches uh, like this one here, uh, which is it's just kind of a hybrid here, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, I tend to make those no more than 2.4 inches in diameter. They can range from square, rectangle, hexagon, like I did one for a roofing company over here. Uh, use your imagination. Um, there, this one is a contour cut, uh, the same way with this one. Uh, this one is a rectangular cut. Um, in fact, uh, I, this is another one I did. I did a cattle tag and I actually took a brass uh, rivet and stuck it up in there and it makes it look like uh, this is my this is my logo for my Etsy store. All right, let's draw a simple patch. I'm going to click my ellipse tool. In Illustrator, if you hold your shift key down, uh, you will draw a perfect circle. Now, I don't want the black fill, so I am just going to swap the fill and stroke, and as you can see, the solid square it has a red line through it. That means there is no fill and the black square here with the little hole in the middle of it is the stroke line. So this will basically be our, our cut line around our image. And we're gonna add some text here. Uh, let's see, we're gonna do 3, 3D. Oh, that's big. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Yeah. All right, now you're thinking to yourself, okay, perfect, that's a patch. Let's go save this and we'll save it and test patch. All right. Now let's bounce over into Lightburn and import, test patch, and uh, wait a minute, where did our text go? We've got the line, uh, you know what, well, uh, this is actually one of, one of the, the problems that trip a lot of people up in Illustrator and any vector uh, type programs is the the text. So let me go back to here and now we need to select it because Illustrator is just recognizing this as text. It has to be converted to outlines or a path. So it's very simple. You click Object, expand. You'll get this little box. Object, fill. Boom, there you go. Now let's save it. All right, let's go back. And it looks great, but there's one problem. There's just one layer. Uh, let's see what the heck here let's let's do a preview and let's play it and it's just basically going to cut the, the leather out here um, yeah that's not gonna work 
So basically, let's go back into Illustrator and fix this. And let me select this circle, delete. And let's go back into Illustrator. All we really need to do is we need to differentiate this from the, we need to differentiate the, the text from the cut line. So all you really need to do is make the cut line a different color. It really doesn't matter what color uh, the stroke line is around here. It can be pink, blue, green. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a different color than what you are engraving here, whatever the text is. So I'm going to go save it and save. And now I'm going to bring it into Lightburn import and select it hey now check it out we have two layers here we have a fill layer and a line layer the fill layer is the engraving and the line layer is the cut line so now we're going to adjust the speed and the power for each layer because your engraving is going to be different speed and power than your cut. So now, and let's see, I've already adjusted that, and let's go to your preview, which looks like a little television up here, and click play, and look, that is going to engrave first, and it is going to cut second. That is all there is to it. Now if you get your lines and your layers mixed up you can click and hold and just drag up now i don't like to cut my patch out first uh, with the line here on layers on top here is because it tends to sometimes curl the patch when it comes up so i want to engrave first so i want to do the fill first and then I want to do the line first, or the line second, I should say. And now it's going to engrave the leather, and it's going to cut. There you go. And all of that tutorial in Lightburn and Illustrator brings us to here, which is our actual project. I was uh, commissioned to do another 30 hats for the Rivercrest Orchard and I set it up in Lightburn. As you can see the uh, pink line is my cut line and my engraving is the, uh, the logo and I've got my fill set up at 200 millimeters per second and 45 max power. I'm using the G-Week Pro 50 watt CO2 laser uh, just because it is so stinking fast and we're going to do a direct comparison to the uh, to my Glowforge Pro here and we're going to see just how fast this G-Week Cloud Pro is. All right now I've got my cut line set up to 30 millimeters per second and 90 power. So, all right, so now uh, everything is set up. Uh, I just want to point out to you that is the, um, the lines per inch is 270.21 lines per inch. That is the resolution. That is going to be important because I'm gonna point it out in the, uh, on the Glowforge app here. So now let's go take a look at this. And this is our preview. It is going to take 11 minutes and 52 seconds. It is going to go through and engrave because that's how we set up our layers here. We set up our fill layer first and our cut line second, which is our pink line. And it is gonna go through and zip around there. And we are done. All right, check this out. After I clicked start on my G-Week Pro 50 watt CO2 laser, look how fast this thing moves. 
Now I had to use some tie downs. Now you want to use some tie downs on your leather uh, just to keep it stabilized and it is it is moving and I am really really impressed with this G Week Pro 50 watt laser and uh, just check this out I mean it cuts like butter I mean it just it really moves I've been really super impressed with the G Week Cloud Pro compared to my Glowforge Pro and I am just ecstatic that I have the opportunity to use uh, this new 50 watt CO2 GUI cloud. Now for you Glowforge users, choose thick natural leather and that'll give you the correct engraving and cut speeds. Uh, let me open my engrave. I set it to standard graphic and as there's that magic number 270 lines per inch and I'm just verifying some of the settings here and uh, let's see let's go back and as you can see the uh, the engrave and the cut lines are or layers I should say are very similar to Lightburn in a in a more uh, uh, in a more basic, uh, easy to understand um, uh, way in the Glowforge. And I'll give it to Glowforge as far as easy to understand. But once you understand the concept of layers, uh, you're not gonna have any trouble. Now we click print and it's going to run through its calculations and it's going to go to the Glowforge servers and I subscribe to the to the uh, Glowforge premium service which supposedly puts me on their fast servers and it now we wait and we wait and we wait and it's going to take approximately uh, 20 minutes as you can see here, this is real time, folks. This is preparing my print. There we go. 20 minutes, 58 seconds. 20 minutes, 58 seconds. And by clicking the magic button, click, and off we go with the Glowforge Pro. And it's slowly starting to mark. We're 13 minutes in, folks, and we're still um, we're still engraving. Uh, look at this! Look at the inset photo here of the Gui Cloud Pro, and I would say it is like twice as fast than the Glowforge. Um, yeah, the um, the Glowforge is an excellent machine, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to manufacturing these patches, time is money. And uh, this is a, this is right here is a great comparison of the actual cutting time of the Glowforge versus the GWE Cloud Pro 50 watt CO2 laser. Uh, look at this. This is real time. I've cut two patches out compared to one on the Glowforge. And the GWE Cloud Pro is done. Don't get me wrong, folks. I love my Glowforge Pro. I think it's an awesome machine. But if you're looking for a second machine that is going to uh, give you the speed uh, that you need to create and make these patches, uh, this the G Week Cloud Pro has thoroughly impressed me, and it was it's at half the price of the Glowforge Pro. Those of you who have not seen the G Week Cloud Pro, 
50 watt CO2 laser. This is my new favorite go-to because it is so stinking fast. It is very similar to the Glowforge, except it does have linear rails, which makes it super quiet. And hey, check this out. It is got a rotary attachment. And not one rotary attachment, but two rotary attachments for different size cylindrical objects. You basically just drop the honeycomb tray out, put your hook, the attachment up, and go to town. All right, I have my patches laid out on a piece of cardboard, and I have not washed them, I have not brushed them off because I need to seal the char. And my secret to sealing the char is Fibings Resiline. That's right, Fibings Resiline is an acrylic finish from Weaver Leather Supply. Now let's do some applying. My secret weapon for applying it is the Model E91. Less than $30 airbrush from Amazon. My airbrush compressor of choice is the No Name by Spraygunner.com. They're super reliable, super inexpensive, and I love it. And this is my cheapo airbrush from Amazon. Wear a respirator. You want to start with light coats. Light, light coats, and just a couple will um, suffice. And the finished product. The Resiline did its job. All of the char, all of the burnt little leather bits are sealed into the patch. At this point, your patches are done. Store them, sell them. I usually make them on the fly for whatever order I'm working on. Now onto the canvas, the trucker hat. Trucker hats continue to suffer from supply chain issues, but they're not impossible to find if you know where to look. The two by far most popular brand and style of trucker hat are the Richardson 112 and the Yupung 6606 which are nearly identical. Uh, the Richardson has, I believe, more uh, cotton. Yeah, more cotton. Uh, well, it's 60% cotton, 40% polyester, while the Yupung is 65%, uh, 35% cotton. Uh, they're both six panel hats with snapback closures, mesh. The Richardson 112 has a lot more color choices um, they than the Yupung has uh, there's a there's a limited amount of color choices on the the YP classic 6606 but they're very very similar in style uh, and if you can't get the Richardson 112s um, pick up some Yupungs uh, you cannot go wrong. I started out buying from Wordans. Uh, they seem to have a good supply of Yupung 6606. Although their colors can be limited, uh, you do get free shipping with, uh, I believe, over $59. The price per hat can be a little over $5 depending on the quantity. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few in stock. Uh, you can see this stock number down here. Uh, those are some pretty popular. Those are some pretty popular colors there. Um, and this <laughs> this may not be this way um, uh, this evening because they they tend to sell out quick. Wordans does not carry the the Richardson one uh, twelves, and uh, unless they've changed. No, they do not carry the Richardson 112's caps. Uh, so that's why I went with the S&S Activewear. Now, S&S Activewear has the most variety of Richardson and Yupung prices, uh, or Yupung hats, the 6606, at the best prices. And they do have a uh, warehouses 
that uh, list all their inventories. Like there's Robbinsville, New Jersey. They have 2006 pieces of those. And they tend to sell out really, really quick. Um, but they do require a resale license and an active business. But basically, you just need to set up an Etsy store. That's what I did. I set up an Etsy store. Uh, mine is called the Bar 2B Ranch. And I put a couple products out there and I just opened the store. And that's all they require. But they do require a resale license uh, to get started. So making these hats require that you keep an inventory of various colors and it will require a small upfront investment to get started. Uh, my suggestion is that you sell these, you roll some of your profits over into more inventory as it becomes available. So, you know, once you sell a couple of these, go out here and they're not very expensive. Uh, just go ahead and, and pick some of the most popular colors, carry about 12 to or 6 to 12, you know, hats and go from there. Um, you can't go wrong with popular colors and because you will get repeat business and you, but you I would suggest that you take a lot of your a lot of your profits and roll them back into your business. Okay, I've got my patches ready, and I've got my shoe anvil. This is an antique shoe anvil I picked up from eBay for about 20 bucks, and this helps steady the hat. Now, I got some uh, double-sided scotch tape. It's a half inch uh, width, and I find it, it it doesn't have you know as as much adhesive and it doesn't really stick to these hats but it does provide a good guide to lining up these patches and as you can see here the Yupung and the Richardson have a natural center line that you can line it up uh, perfectly so I've choose these points down here on this particular patch and I'm going to take the center line and line those points up on that tape and that gives me a perfect half inch off the brim. Alrighty, now on to the adhesive. On to the adhesive. I'm using the Silly brand, Silly, Silly Silicon. Uh, this these brushes are fantastic. They're water washable. They clean up really great. And I'm using the, yes sir, Rebob, the Fibings Leathercraft Cement from Weaver Leather Supply. I've got it in a gallon size jug. Here it, it kind of pours like Elmer's glue, kind of. It's a little bit thicker than Elmer's. Uh, but I'll yeah look look at look at this it's it's kind of like pancake batter almost drip 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 shake it okay and now we go to the brush and I'm gonna pick up my patch and as you can see there is a rough side here and I'm going to take this little bit of glue and you're going to notice that this patch will absorb some of this glue. Uh, as you can see, it is going on nicely. Uh, the silicon brushes make little streaks uh, on the back so you don't over put the, don't over, over populate the, over populate? Oh, <laughs> over apply the, over apply the glue. As you can see, I am going all around being careful not to put too much on, but this silicone brush with the little ridges and the little fingers, little silicone fingers, it uh, tends to help disperse the glue uh, perfectly. 
and we carefully apply it just getting the points of the patch lined up and now we must press what I use is the palm of my hand and I put my other hand in the inside of the cat and I'll show you here in just a moment here uh, I will get this out of the way and you see how I'm putting my fingers on top and I'm pressing and then I'm holding and this does not take long probably around 30 seconds and it let me remove this tape here and yeah let's see that's nice and pressed down and uh, well, I'm sure you don't want to see the tag oh, there we go see I apply even pressure from both sides and yeah there we go make sure those points are down and done now I'll lay this hat aside and then I'll do another hat and I'll come back to this one and apply more pressure uh, to the hat or to the patch I should say uh, just to make sure that it's stuck so after a few minutes you'll see that your patch is firmly attached the glue dries in an hour or so but I always give mine 24 hours before I deliver them now I place my hats in a plastic bag for protection these shirt bags from Amazon work perfectly and they seal up with a strip of tape it helps to protect the hat from dust and debris and makes the order look nice in fact, you can get up to six hats in a single bag for multiple hat orders. And don't forget to include a business card with your order. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below for these shirt bags. If you're mailing the hats, uh, use an 8 by 8 by 8 box. I get mine from Uline. Seal the box and use your favorite shipping service. I got this tape from uh, Sticker Mule, and it was a it was a special uh, special deal. Now on to marketing. Where and how do I sell these? Where do I start? My suggestion to you is to make one for yourself. Who better to advertise? Start small. There are plenty of small businesses that would just love these auto shops, electrical shops, plumbing businesses, small businesses. The farmer's market is a great place to talk these hats up. Make sure you have plenty of business cards and your sample hat or hats. Check this out. I took this to a local pumpkin patch owner. They had merchandise but their hats were screen printed and I showed them my hats and they ordered a couple. Next thing I know they wanted a hundred then another hundred. Then they asked about straw hats and then another big order. In fact, I'm finishing up a 30 hat order for them to finish out the season. Don't sell yourself short. Start small. Heck, I went to school with a girl who now is a well-known wedding planner. I see her posts on Facebook and reached out to her. How about bride, groom, father of the bride, groomsman hats? She loved the idea. Do not forget about Father's Day, dad hats, think outside the box. You know, I'd be interested to see what you guys come up with. Once you post your ideas down in the comment section below. And with Christmas right around the corner, I'll be sharing a money-making project with you guys on the next video. So if you haven't liked and subscribed, make sure and smash that like and subscribe button right now like and subscribe make sure and smash that like and subscribe button right now make sure and scrab that scrab that make sure and make sure and smash that like and subscribe button now hey and if you're interested in the G Week Cloud Pro I have put a link in the description below and use the discount code Garrett at G-A-R-R-E-T to save $200 hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you again next time on 3D Print Farm bye now